said I'm on. So here we are, I guess. Are you all glad to be here this morning? All right, I like that. We drive up and Sarah said it doesn't look like very many vehicles, but it feels warm, nice in here, but uh, a little bit cool out this morning. Yeah, the ice was that thick on the stock tank. That's right, Sean. I was shocked it was that cold. It was, I had to kick pretty hard this morning to open up the water. But um, uh, Ryan was supposed to be here today, and, and he's got the COVID stuff going on. So uh, anyway, we st- uh, that kind of all happened yesterday afternoon, and, and um, so we need to sure enough keep Ryan in our prayers and filling in the blanks this morning. But um, who, by a show of hands out here, is ready for Christmas already? I ready for Christmas, but uh, stuff. Okay, is anybody not ready for Christmas? Yeah, I'm with Mike. I haven't bought anything yet, so. Oh, you bought it all. Okay, all right. Yeah. So it's wrapped. <laughs> if it's in the sack, I'd say it's wrapped. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Well, I am impressed that you're, you are all ready for Christmas because I did not expect everybody to raise their hand and say that they was ready for Christmas. So, or prepared for Christmas might have been a better word. But uh, anyway, I guess, um, are there any announcements? I, I really didn't see any. If you got some, come on up. Um, uh, Abenfeld's having a uh, nativity scene. I think it might have even been last night. But I was asked to announce that again. It's tonight from 6 to 8 um, at Abenfeld, if anybody has a desire to go. Have you been? It's a live nativity. You stay in your car, and I guess you watch out of your car. You turn on your radio, maybe, if I remember right. Never been, but uh, said they had a good crowd last night, and just want to make sure everybody was aware of that tonight. So. Uh, just a reminder that uh, high schoolers are no longer meeting on Sunday nights uh, currently. Until further notice, they'll be meeting with the middle schoolers on Wednesday nights. Uh, also want to uh, invite the uh, youth group to a lock-in on New Year's Eve, which is a Friday, uh, by popular demand that has been uh, requested, so it's been a while <laughs> since we've done one, so we understand that they want to do a lock-in, so we'll do a lock-in on uh, New Year's Eve with them. So uh, if you'd like your kids to go to that, uh, I need your email so that I can get out permission slips and all that stuff, so thank you. We're just going to ask that you pick up your Christmas cards in your mailbox out there before you leave today. If you cannot, if you just holler at Tammy or John or I, We'll be happy to deliver them to you, but we just thought if you can grab them, that might make it a little easier because we're still filing. So, Merry Christmas. I want to announce, too, I guess, that the Christmas Eve program Friday night would be Christmas Eve, right? 5.30? 5.30 here at the church. So make sure you can attend that and bring your family if, if they're there with you. And the, the offering, the offering goes to the Ron Hedrick family. Ron Hedrick family. Uh, so you can keep that in, in mind, too, um, just a free will offering that evening. Whatever's collected will go to, to Ron and, uh, and help out there. And former choir members that want to take peace, peace with us, we're going to be after Sunday school today real quick. Go see that. Former choir members. Could be a few of those when you say former. Yeah. We need to meet after after Sunday school. We're going to go through that real quick to sing for Christmas Eve services. I don't know if there's any, nothing else. We, oh, got one more back here, John. Okay, so men's Bible study. There's not anything this week. It's going to be after the first of the year, the first Wednesday. The fifth is what we think that is. Okay, that's that's what this means, Kevin. <laughs> okay. 
I didn't know yeah, what this I'll really meant. But... Said, There's a rumor going around that the, the pastor search team committee meeting is is Monday or tomorrow evening at seven o'clock here at the church. Right. We're like ninety plus percent sure. So those of you who are on the pastor search team, plan on showing up. If we hear something different from Rod, we'll let, we'll let you know. Rod said yes. All right. So let's plan on it. Okay. So we'll plan on being there tomorrow evening. So anyone on that team? Um, there's something else. I guess that's it. That's it for now. And Rod still dealing with the COVID deal too, I guess. So um, it's still around. Um, birthdays. Do we have any birthdays to celebrate besides one big one? No birthdays. No. You got one coming. Oh. I got one coming down. All right. That's a good deal. Yeah, pretty heavy. Here we go. Better sing happy birthday. I tried to count, but he was going fast. So, Sean, can you say how old he, Gannon is? Nine. Nine years old. He was putting a lot of coins in there. Happy birthday, Gannon. Okay, and, and anniversaries. Another one of these signs. Uh, yeah, Eugene and Betty. This could be worth clapping for. So, <laughs> let's let's just see. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, how, 64 years, yeah, all right. 64 what? 64 what? Good years. Good years? Well, how many bad years did you have in there? You didn't count those? No, I didn't have any. Well, good. <laughs> That's Eugene's opinion anyway, so, okay. <laughs> That's that's it. Well, let's uh, let's quiet down, calm our souls, open our hearts, and prepare to worship this morning.
I don't know about you guys, that gave me goosebumps. But, um, I think we'll do the lighting of the Advent candle, uh, Tori Hett family. Along with the hope, peace, and joy candles, today we will light the love candle. The scripture today is one of my very favorites. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 16. This is probably the best known verse in the Bible. John 3.16 is flashed in ballparks and memorized in Sunday school classes. Why is it so beloved? Because it tells us about God's love, the reason that the Father sent his Son on Christmas Day. He gave his one and only Son that Christmas, that Christmas morn. Why? Because he loved the world so much. Not the physical globe, but the people whom he had created. Struggling, confused, exuberant, depressed, striving, and sinful. He loved them. He loves us. That is why Jesus came. In the way Jesus related to hurting people, we can see that love, that love, that compassion. His gentle words, my daughter, to the woman who would who touched the hem of his garment, his encouragement to Peter, who had betrayed him. Feed my sheep, Peter, I haven't given up on you. His compassion for the crowds, whom he saw as sheep without a shepherd. Jesus came on Christmas morn out of the Father's love, and in spite of persecution and crucifixion, even a history of saints and sinners inside and outside of his church. His love for us is undiminished this Advent season. Please bow with me in prayer. Father, thank you for your under, undeserved love that envelopes us and saves us, that fills us with your spirit and includes us in the momentous plans of your kingdom. Thank you for your loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys. If you'll all stand with me and we'll do the call to worship. We're going to read this responsively. Our souls magnify the Lord and our spirits rejoice in God our Savior. For he looks with favor upon us and sees our unrealized potential in the tradition of Mary and all who have said yes to God. We stand here today to add our asset to theirs. Like Mary, we feel overwhelmed. We wonder if we are worthy or capable of following the calling. 
Like Mary, we have our questions, and we will not be afraid to ask them. Like Mary, we will hear and ponder the assurance that God will empower us. Like Mary, we will strive to say, let it be with us according to your will, to whatever God is inviting of us at this time in our lives and relying on God's grace. We say yes. Amen. Worship team. Good morning, and welcome to those of you here in the sanctuary, those of you online, and those of you who might be in the fellowship hall. It is good to be here. Um, yeah, I'm ready for Christmas. I'm ready for the celebration and all of that kind of thing. Not so much ready in the wrapping department, <laughs> buying department, whatever. Yeah, it's just, you know, I just try not to get caught up in all of that and just keep thinking that it's not about all of that. It is whatever you know, when we come together and, and enjoy each other's company, because um, I ordered off of Amazon, you know, and if you do that, they're, they're, you know, the whole shipping thing, they mean it. Um, so some of the kids are gonna get pictures in boxes because the gifts aren't here yet, but it's like, oh well, it's not about that. It is about coming together and celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior and being together with family. From, from Isaiah 49, 13, excuse me, from Psalm 98, four through nine. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Seven. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn.
Turn around and greet your neighbor. verse 12. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. bow your heads and pray with me please heavenly father as we open your word this morning we pray that your voice will be heard and that our ears are open our hearts are open to receive your message that Clint brings us this morning may we be transformed into your likeness through Jesus Christ our Lord amen Kids, <laughs> come on down. Let's see if I 
I can get down here. Okay. No, hand me that. Thank you. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, who can tell me what we've been, what I've been talking about this month? Do you guys remember? Candy? Okay, sometimes. Do you remember the, the very first Sunday? What did I bring the very first lights? lights. And what was important about those? Um, it would like represent um, a different thing about God in one tiny light could, could light. Right. Um, right. And I know about candy. And when Sam Ellis gets candy, they put a new song. Oh, what did I bring last week? Do you remember? Oh. That you can, that, and how, what, what does, what did, was the significance of those? Um, when we turned it, what? Right. Right, and a W, and that helped us tell the Christmas story, didn't it? Okay, so Tripp has something else today. He's going to pass one of those out to everyone. Everyone knows what those are, right? Yeah. Candy canes. You, you, well, you can ask your parents when you get back to your seat if you can open it. But yes, I don't care. But not not while we're up here. So just wait a minute. Okay, because you got to look at it first. Okay. It has stripes. It does. Okay. It's in a Hi. There's two more, Trip. Okay. All right. So, how many of you like candy canes? Do all of you like them? I'm going to make them into a little, and I'm going to make the point, I'm going to make the bottom into a little mini nut. Oh, okay. So listen to this about candy canes. Candy canes were invented almost 400 years ago in Germany. And the original candy cane was, was just straight. It didn't have a hook on it. And it was just plain white. It didn't have, didn't have the, right, it was like a candy stick. It didn't have the red stripes. In, and then in the year 1670, a choir master in Germany bent them to make it look like a shepherd's staff so that you could hang them on your Christmas tree. And then eat them later, yeah. The first historical reference in America about a candy cane was in 1847 when a man in Ohio hung them on his Christmas tree. And then it said that the red stripes were added sometime around 1900. So, yeah. Okay, so... Did you know that candy canes can teach us about Jesus? What? What? Oh my goodness. Can't listen to candy canes? Yes, listen to this. Okay. Okay, so the white part of the candy cane. Look at the white part of your candy cane. That can help us remember that Jesus was pure and holy. He was without sin. The white can also help us remember that God washes away our sins and makes us as white as snow when we put our trust in Jesus as our Savior. Okay, so I'm going to read a little Bible verse here now. This is from, did you bring your Bible? Good. That's, this is from Isaiah 1, 18. Okay. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Okay, so what do you think the red stripes can represent? Okay. All right, and what does that mean? What would crimson? How could that uh, remind us of Jesus? What color is crimson? Red. Red. I don't know what crimson looks hmm. like. Red. That can help us remember the blood that Jesus shed for each of us. So listen to this one. This is from Isaiah 53. Look here, 53, 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Okay. Now, how are candy canes soft or are they hard? hard. They are hard. Okay. okay, listen. Sometimes they break. <laughs> yeah, I broke mine. We can get into that in a minute, too. Okay, the hardness of the candy can help us remember that Jesus is our rock. And if we build our lives upon him, our lives can be secure. Okay, Ephesians 2.20. Let's look at this one. This one says, let me find it. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. 
Okay, how about the shape of a candy cane? What did I tell you that he originally did it in a shape? Like, a like a shepherd's staff, right? And the Bible tells us that Jesus is our good shepherd and he watches over us, doesn't he? So from John 10, 11, I've got to go back and forth with my glasses. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays his life for the sheep. Okay, now I want you all to turn your candy cane upside down and make it to it in the shape of a what? A J. A J for Jesus. Yeah, radio. That's exactly right. Okay. And let's read this. This is from Matthew 1, 21. This is our last one. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So look at all the different things on a candy cane that can help you guys remember Jesus and help tell the story about him, about his life. Every aspect of it, okay? All right, so Tripp is going to pass out. This is a little bookmark, and this just goes, and it tells you about all the different things that we just talked about, okay? So Tripp's, actually, let's pray first, and then I'll have you pass those out, Tripp. She did. Well, great minds think alike, huh? Okay, let's fold our hands and we're going to pray. Dear Father God, I thank you for these children that come each and every week to learn more about you. I ask that as this we come upon this week that leads up to your birth, that you help still our hearts and help us remember what Christmas is all about. Please help these children share your story um, every chance they get. And we ask all this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Tripp's going to hand out the bookmark. Then you guys are done. Yeah, I have another one. <laughs> oh, good. I think all the kiddos know where they're supposed to go. We'll now have a time for our tithes and offerings. There are plates at the back, and you can also give online if you like. But let's pray. Dear Lord, we just come to you, Lord, and how blessed we are, Lord, that you love us and you, and the gifts that you give us, Lord. Lord, um, let us just give freely as we can, Lord, um, to you this morning, Lord, and just bless, bless this offering and just further your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
I don't have a time uh, for prayer concerns. I've got a few up here uh, and joys too. Um, the first one is asking for a prayer for rental housing that is affordable for me since I just started a new job. And it needs to come by the end of December, and that's for Anita Kirkman. This is Kim Metcalf. Is still struggling with COVID and oxygen issues. Also, doctors discovered a tumor near her ear that will need to be addressed when she re recovers from COVID. Let's be an update on Rodney Schmidt. He's much better and is adjusting to his diabetes with meds and meals. And then Robert Schmidt came home last Sunday, and he's taking pain medicine as needed and is doing much better. All right. And here's, here's a joy to thank you for your prayer for Clifford, making it through his eye cataract surgery in good shape. So are there any others this morning anyone cares to share? Jackie is here in the congregation today. That's a pretty big joy. Yep. Your dad? Cameron's dad, Scott, had shoulder surgery. And uh, just pray for healing for him, for Scott Bolin. Joel? He was the fire victims out west. Mm-hmm. Yeah, praying for the fire victims out around Russell out in that country it um pretty devastating uh in lot lots of ways those with COVID. yeah and those with covid i think the tornado deal the last week uh, was that last weekend maybe it's been longer than that too we need to keep those all of them in our prayers too Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Dear Lord, we come to you this morning in a joyous time of year, Lord, and, and yet there's things that are concerns, Lord, that um, we address with prayer, Lord. We bring them to you this morning with um, grateful hearts that you will answer our prayers, Lord. Her knee. And we pray that you put that in someone's heart or, to uh, to fulfill that need for her, Lord. We just ask prayers for Anita. Lord, we're thankful this morning for Clifford and um, for answered prayers, Lord, that uh, surgeries can go fine and and perhaps Clifford can see better than he's seen in a while, Lord. We just thank you for that and continued healing. Lord, we lift up uh, Robert Schmidt this morning, Lord, along with, along with his, his boy, Rodney, Lord, as they both recover and adjust to things, Lord, from past surgeries and past illnesses, Lord, and uh, um, just to deal, deal with the diabetes, Lord. Lord, we lift up Kim Metcalf this morning, Lord, and um, as she's dealing with the, the issues of COVID, Lord, and um, and then the to deal with a tumor, Lord, on top of that, Lord. We just lift her up that you'll give uh, the doctors the care for her, Lord, um, give them the proper expertise to heal her and make her stronger, Lord, that they can deal with the with the tumor for Kim. Lord, we also lift up the ones that aren't here this morning, Lord, due to COVID, Lord, and just to, um, Lord, we, get, we give this thing, COVID, a lot of power over us, Lord, and Lord, we just pray that um, you heal those that can be healed, Lord, that you give them the strength, Lord, that, um, that they fear, fear not, Lord. Lord, we pray for this um, 
We pray for the tornado victims, Lord, and the devastation that that had. Um, how it impacted complete towns, complete families, Lord, and the loss of life, Lord. Um, Lord, we pray for, for volunteers to help, Lord, that you keep them safe. Lord, we pray for the ones that are recovering from injuries and losses from that, Lord, that, that you will fulfill their needs, Lord. Lord, what great opportunity there is to help. Lord, closer to home, we pray for the fire victims there in north central Kansas, Lord, and the devastation that's happened there, Lord, in a different way, Lord. But um, we know that there was physical, personal loss, Lord, and, and injuries, Lord. And we pray that them pe people be healed, Lord, and, and um, give them a chance to rebuild, Lord. We pray for just their well-being, their spiritual well-being, their mental well-being, Lord, of, uh, of, a, of a loss like that, Lord. And sometimes you just don't know where to turn and you've poured your life into something like that, Lord. And we just pray again that there be opportunity there, Lord. And again, a great opportunity to help, Lord, to help serve, Lord, to help, help our neighbors in need, Lord. Lord, I just pray that this Christmas season, that, we, that each and every one of us, Lord, and us, and us as a country, Lord, will turn towards you, Lord, and not, not away, Lord. That it's a time to celebrate, Lord. And, um, Lord, there's, a, there's lots of things right now that's kind of hard to celebrate, Lord. And there's lots of firsts this year. There's... There's first with loss, but there's first with gains too, Lord, and there'll be a lot of first, Lord. But Lord, I just um, we look to you, Lord, and that we can truly celebrate this season because of the Savior that you sent to us, Lord, that that we raise up on Christmas Day, Lord. We pray these things. In Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to do a scripture reading? Yeah. All stand, please. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha. The Lord answered, You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You know, earlier I asked if you all was ready for, for Christmas, and all the hands went up. And I really didn't expect that because I was thinking about the wrapping. I was thinking about the Christmas candy that may have been made, maybe is in the works, maybe been made, been eaten. Um, you know, there, there's, there's lots of things. But there's lots of things that we do to um, prepare ourselves. And Ryan's talked about that, preparing and a plan and that. And how Christmas... Um, how big of a deal it is, and yet how simple it is. But now it seems like today we have created such an atmosphere that Christmas starts in July, 
you know, and the shopping starts and the retail starts and it goes on and on and on, which that's okay. I mean, because there needs to be a little bit of preparation, a little bit of excitement. I mean, there, you got to build up with some anticipation. When you as a kid, I looked very much forward to Christmas because of the gifts. I mean, that's, wh that's what it was. I was a spoiled little boy, and it was an exciting time. Man, when you got to go to Grandma's, you got to be with your cousins, and there was gifts, and, and it is fun to open gifts. But there was anticipation, and there was a buildup to that. I don't know how I'm going to work this, but there's always a little bit of a buildup. If you have an opening act at a concert... There's an opening act, isn't there not? Have you ever gone to see a big name and you got to set through an hour of somebody you didn't really know who they were? Yeah, you do that. You know, a lot of times if, you, if there's a fight, a big boxing match, they have uh, a lot of matches before that, before the main event. Well, that's what we're pre preparing for. But closer to home for me... It's a K-State football game. Who here has gone to a K-State football game in the last five, six years? A few of you. What happens before the game? Tailgate. There's tailgate. Yeah, there's tailgate. We very seldom ever made it up there in time for tailgate. We're walking at the time it starts. But before the game, they start to play some music and whatnot. And it used to be they'd have a, they had a skit where Willie the Wildcat, he would come in and he would tackle the opposing team's mascot or figment of whatever they had. And that was all fun and games. And we was actually up there one day and, and uh, he ran in and tackled the guy and the crowd goes wild. You know, this is just right before the game starts. Well, the guy doesn't get up. They come out. They flip the coin, and this guy's still laying here. And they finally start getting some help out there. They had to hold up the game. The guy had a concussion from that. So that event no longer happened. After that, that was the last time I saw that. Uh, but I was actually there at that game, and I thought it was obvious what was going on. That Man, this guy's a really good actor. Or, uh, but anyway, he was hurt. But there's, there's a lot of buildup. There's a, there's a song that's played. Right before, right before, I don't know if it's right when the team comes in, but I mean, the, the crowd is just kind of, when you're there, it's kind of like when we're all here at church, we're all excited, we're all for the same thing, and they just, they know how to feed you, and they know how to build you up. So this morning, we got just a little bit of an exercise, because I know, you know, we stand up and we praise and we sing God in our praise songs, and we're excited but I've sat up there, and I've stood up here, and I've seen this part of the service. I've seen people look pretty dead. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it, but sometimes it's kind of like, what's going on out here? But this morning, I want us to be full of anticipation and excitement. And Tori's going to play a song. And if you're a K-State person, you're going to know about this. If not, you're not. But you just as well stand up right now because you're going to be excited. Stand up and let's see what Tori's got for us and see if you're ready for this, if you're all ready. Yeah! Come on! What's the crowd, ain't it, Tim? Y'all ready for this? All right, y'all ready for this? That's what it's about. We're ready for Christmas. This is good. I'm even impressed. I would clap, but I can't keep a beat. You can be seated. <laughs> but I can tell you at that time, everybody is excited. They're on the same page, and, and it's the anticipation, you know. And all of a sudden, uh, it just kind of starts to go wild. And then the game happens, and, you know, if, if, you, if you're ahead, you kind of maintain that momentum. But if not, you kind of da-da-da-da, and... You know, if you get beat, you just kind of go home and whatnot. But, but uh, if you win, you're pretty good for a while. By the time you get home, get down fighting traffic, you're back to the da-da-da deal. <laughs> so, but anyway, there's this anticipation for Christmas. And my point was, are you all ready for Christmas? 
and y'all said you was. But yet I did hear about the wrapping and the shipping. The coat that come in that was too big. Um, my mother-in-law was extremely concerned this year about her Christmas meal. It's the most unorganized event. She says, I just don't know how it's going to happen. It's all under control. There will be plenty of food. There always is. It always works out. It always does. This morning, you got to, if you, what Cameron read, that, that passage this morning, this is a direct sermon out of Pastor Jeff's playbook. And some of you will remember it because I, I can remember it. It's had an impact on Sarah and I, on Mary and Martha. And I can remember, I'm sure it was the first year he was here. I don't know what part of the Christmas time it was, but he gave a very same sermon on this, on this deal. And it was to have a Merry Christmas. So, I mean, I kind of got, this happened pretty fast, but this came about yesterday. And I, and I, <laughs> this sermon idea. So I've been working on it. So like I say, I've stole this from Jeff. But reading this scripture about Martha and Mary that Cameron read this morning, he talked about, um, my verse read just a little bit different, but said that Jesus and his disciples came to town and that Martha invited them, or she welcomed them, it says him, into her home. So Martha invited him. Martha was a friend of Jesus. Um, it's kind of unique to be called a friend of Jesus. It had to actually be recorded, both her and Mary and Lazarus. But he invited him to the house. Did you pick up on where Mary sat? Where was that? At, at his feet. She sat front and center. That's where Mary sat. And it says that Jesus taught. Mine said that um, her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. Now I think about that. I'm thinking, okay, Jesus comes over for, for lunch, supper, or whatever. He's invited over. You know, and maybe it was just typical dinner conversation. I don't know. Maybe it's just small talk. But when Jesus talks about the weather... When Jesus talks about the cattle market, when Jesus talks about whatever you talk about, when Jesus talks about your family, don't you suppose you probably pay a little more attention? I mean, when he talks about the weather, he probably understands it a little far greater than us, and you're going to listen to what he says. And Mary understood that. She was there. She was in the middle of that. But there was Martha. Martha. Mine says, but Martha was distracted by the big dinner that she was preparing. The big dinner she was preparing. It said that she was distracted. She was in Jesus' presence. She invited him over. He comes over, and yet she was distracted. And why was she distracted? I forget how that one reads. It says distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. They just have to be made. Mine said the big dinner. That happens at our house. We can have someone over, and I'm thinking, okay, let's just have a sandwich or something, and the next thing you know, it's kind of turned into the five-course meal, which is, is good. I enjoy that, but all of a sudden, it's become a big, big deal. It requires a lot of effort and a lot of work on Martha, Martha's part. Maybe she could have kept it simple. So then Martha, she goes and asks Jesus. I find this just a little bit, little bit funny. Um, she goes to Jesus and says, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. Why didn't she just go ask Mary to come help her? You know, why did she, why did she uh, go to the Lord and, and ask? And she asked, but she didn't give him a chance to answer. She asked, and then she told told Jesus what he needs to do. He says, Jesus, you need to tell her to come help me. You know, was she trying to draw a little attention to herself, or, or was she trying to, uh, I don't know. 
you know, or had she been like my wife and she'd asked me a hundred times, she'd ask Mary a hundred times and she didn't get a response and thought, well, Jesus will get a response <laughs> from Mary. That's, that's probably what happened. But Jesus answers with concern. He says, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. All these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. And Mary's figured that out. Mary's figured that out. The funny thing about that message that Pastor Jeff gave, at that time, I was attending the Florence Church, and Sarah had started coming out here. And Jeff would come out here, and he'd give a message, and then he'd go to Florence and give the message. And, you know, we'd always compare and get home what Sarah heard and what I heard. And this, this particular message has really, I don't know, been a point of contention somewhat uh, between us for I don't know how long ago that was, several years ago, several Christmases ago, several events ago. But the Mary and Martha deal. I heard that Mary had it all figured out. You need to be like Mary. You know, keep it simple. The main thing's the main thing. Focus upon that. My wife heard Martha needed help. <laughs> That's what my wife heard. So in our household, we both have our roles. I happen to be Mary, and Sarah happens to be Martha. <laughs> and I fully embrace that. Now my wife, she kind of digs a little bit once in a while. She wants to go say, hey, Jesus, tell him to come help me. All right? But that's been an ongoing deal for us for quite some time. And I just wonder, are we all ready for this? Are we ready for Christmas? Because this Martha and Mary deal comes out really big for us right now. Because I'll admit, I have an angel of a wife who takes care of everyone at Christmas. And have I bought anything yet? No, I haven't. Have I wrapped anything yet? No, I haven't. I've been a food taster, candy taster, but that's been about all I've put in, into this deal. That's about all. And even though I heard to stay focused upon what I heard was stay focused upon Jesus, keep Christmas simple, all this other stuff that we do, it's all good. It, and it's, 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 it comes from the heart. If it comes from the heart, it's, it's good. And I've seen, I've seen Martha. I've seen my wife. She pays attention to her family. She takes care of her family, and she wants everything perfect, and that's why she does what she does. And it wasn't until about four or five years ago, and I finally realized, and, you know, we, in my opinion, go a little overboard on the gift deal, but it's, it's a great thing because we can, I guess, and um, been able to. But um, a few years ago, I, I watched as we opened gifts, and we've gotten a little bit older. Our kids are a little bit older, and it's not quite as chaotic. Maybe sometimes there's a little organization we hand them out and, People start opening them up a little bit. Sometimes, you know, all the girls are all getting the same thing, so they got to open it all at the same time. But we kind of ooh and all over stuff. But I've watched Sarah, and she sits there. And she doesn't open anything that comes to her. She's just sitting there, and she's watching each person open their gift. And she's put so much love and care and thought into that gift that she wants it to be perfect for them and I as I find great joy in sitting there watching her do that and I finally learned you know that's kind of where Christmas is that's love and it, it's just it's just the one thing it, it's 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 love it's not the, it's not really the gift it's the effort it's the attitude with the gift that's what God has provided for us in Jesus Christ is a gift is a gift. It's not, it's not the Christmas tree. It's not the lights and all that. But how many times do we get stuck on that? I've, Sarah doesn't believe this, but I do have some Martha in me at times and certain things that I try to, try to 
do it, you know, by myself and do it all. And, and, and I know she's got some Mary in her. And I, and I think we all do. And I, I'm, I'm concerned in our country nowadays. Do we miss the meaning of Christmas? Are we really ready for Christmas? Are you all ready for this? Yeah? We hung up lights. That's what you do when you move to town and you live in the city. You put up lights. So I've hung up lights. Probably going to be the last year for that. I had a friend break a leg hanging up lights this year. So I probably won't do that no more. I got out of that one, didn't I, Sarah? <laughs> yep. But I'm really concerned. Are you all ready for this? Are you really ready for the meaning of Christmas and what it, and what it brings? Or are you, are you still wound up about that last box that's got to come in? Are you concerned about that? You know, are you, you know, this whole COVID deal messes up all kinds of family plans. You know, and you get concerned about that. And we get, we get wound up in the small little details, just like Martha did, preparing the big meal. And that's great. Jesus doesn't say that there's anything wrong with what she did. It was just at that moment in time, here he was. And that he should have been her focus, not the, not the meal. And how many times do we get distracted, especially this time of year, with chasing lights, chasing gifts, programs, trying to... I remember when we were younger trying to go to every family Christmas and or orchestrating that. And we're still doing that now, but now we're turning into the older people that this is our Christmas and all you kids got to kind of bounce around. So now we have Christmas well, probably some people had some last night, some today, Friday, Saturday, have some next Sunday. Um, a funny story on a side, side note on that. My dad has been a bachelor for a while or a widow for a while. And, and um, you know, my family kind of texts around a little bit. We don't communicate real well. But uh, my sister, I don't know, 10 days ago, texted out something about, hey, dad was wondering if we're going to have Christmas the Saturday before Christmas, that's kind of when we usually do it. And uh, it was kind of dis discussed, well, we had a family event a month before. That's probably good enough. Well, evidently, Dad didn't get this memo because I was over there Friday. Yeah, Friday. And I walk in, and, boy, he's kind of got a little bounce in his step, and he's cleaning his house, the vacuum sweeper's out. And I thought, well... Well, that's, that's, that's all right. Well, then my daughter-in-law, Shelby, she walks in. And Dad said, yeah, Shelby, she's coming out to do a little more decorating. And I thought, okay. Well, Shelby walks in, and she brings in some food. And she says, Joe, I can't be here tomorrow, but here's some food. You can have some of it tonight, or you can have it tomorrow. And I'm kind of thinking, huh, well, I didn't get invited to any party. Is there, is there a party tomorrow? Well, I'm kind of slow on the uptake. So anyway, it goes on a little while, and that... I left there, and I got to thinking about this whole deal, how, why Shelby felt a need to be out there and have things decorated, and why she brought food. So I called my sister, and I said, so Tammy, are you, is, are your, is your family going out and spending Saturday with Dad? No. And I said, well, I kind of think Dad's kind of thinking, thinking there's a, a party tomorrow. And, yeah, he really was. <laughs> I mean, she actually went out there, and we kind of got it sidetracked to today. I don't know how much of that dad really knows, but uh, uh, anyway, we get, we get lost in the details sometimes on celebrating things. So my question to you this morning is, are you all ready for this? Are you ready for Christmas? Are you ready for, to celebrate what God has given us? Celebrate it every day. I'm all about anticipation and excitement and being ready and being pumped up. But is it for the right reason? I just encourage each and every one of us to do that. What's your focus on? I've heard Ryan speak of that the last couple of weeks. Is your focus upon Jesus Christ this Christmas season? Or are you stuck in the details? Are you ready for this? I just ask that you allow yourself to be to be focused, to be, 
to be fulfilled with anticipation and excitement. That's good. Don't let this other stuff get in our way. That's what I truly hope for us this Christmas season. No matter where we're at, wherever our family is, that we can, the next few days, let that excitement build. And when, when Saturday comes here, the day that we celebrate that, that we truly celebrate it as the birth of our Savior. As truly as the birth of our Savior. Let us pray. Lord, this morning, it's a Christmas time, Lord. And it can bring out the best of many of us, Lord, and it can bring out some tough times for some of us, Lord. And some, some people are searching, Lord, for what Christmas really is. And they, there's many out there who do not know what Christmas is. Sometimes Christmas overwhelms people. Lord, I just pray for the, for the ones who do not understand the true meaning of Christmas, Lord, that it can be explained to them, that they can come to understand the birth of your Savior, Lord. Of you leaving heaven and coming to earth with a purpose and a plan. And a tough one it was. But what you have given each and every one of us, Lord. I just, um, Lord, I pray for, for families who have suffered losses, Lord, this year, Lord. And whether that was this week, last month, or whenever. Whatever type of loss, Lord. And, um, a year of first and a year of new things, Lord. I just, I lift them up, Lord, this morning. That they can find peace. And love in the birth of your birth of our Savior, Lord. Lord, I pray that they can find joy. And Lord, sometimes that's hard. But Lord, I pray that they can, Lord. Lord, I lift up every Martha out here this morning, Lord. And we're thankful for Martha's, Lord, to get things done, Lord. And... Um, Make things happen, Lord, and do the behind-the-scenes stuff, Lord. And, and we need, we need them, Lord. But Lord, just pray that their hearts and their attitude be right, Lord. Lord, I pray for the Marys out here this morning, Lord, that um, uh, uh, are focused upon you, Lord. But Lord, that they'll. To take what they learn from, from you, Lord, to, to share with the Marthas, Lord, to share in the workload, Lord, to share with the others, Lord, um, this, that enthusiasm and that excitement and that um, passion and focus that they have upon you, Lord. Lord, it's still just amazing that you came as a baby. Like you did, Lord, and and people looked for you, and people knew you knew the Messiah was coming, and yet very few people knew when he was born. The small circle, Lord, and Lord, today we have uh, we can each have an individual relationship with you, Jesus, and Lord, in many ways we anticipate you coming again, Lord. An excitement of that, Lord. We just thank you for all you've done. Just ask this in Jesus, our Savior's name. Amen. Y'all ready for this? All right. I don't know what our last song is this morning. I think this is on Wanda. 258. All right. I think we should stand. We should be ready and we should go tell it on the mountain.
Y'all ready for this? Amen. amen. I like hearing amens. That's awesome. Let us go and enjoy the week. Anticipate, excited with what God has given us. Share it. Yell it from the mountains. Amen. Amen. Amen.